and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harley, food blogger, content creator, and overeater. And most importantly today, cake decorator. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this Winter Wonderland theme cake. I've called it that because the sprinkles on the cake are actually called Winter Wonderland by the brand Tweet Belita. It looks nothing like winter or any kind of Winter Wonderland we have in London because the cake would be gray. I decorated three layers of a cinnamon spice cake. If you like that recipe, just leave me a comment in the description and I will write that up on the blog for you. A batch of Swiss meringue buttercream. There's again a link somewhere around here or in the description of how to make Swiss meringue buttercream. Food colouring, I use gels, which I think colours Swiss meringue buttercream the best. I'll throw the colours and links to the ones I've used in the description as well. Cake board, cake turntable, and not much else really. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Try and make this cake over Christmas. Give it to someone, take it to a Christmas party you're going to, or if you don't want to, you can order one from thesmallsizebakery.com. Link in the bio, shameless plug. Follow me on Instagram at the small size. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video, and I hope you enjoy. Firstly, start with your flavoured but uncoloured buttercream in a large piping bag. Put a small blob onto a cake board and spread with an angled palette knife to stick the first layer of sponge to the cake board. Then pipe a swirl onto your first layer of cake. It doesn't have to be particularly thick, just enough to basically cover the surface of the cake. Then pipe a wall of buttercream around the edge of the cake. This is so that you're filling, in this case, some Biscoff, which has been in the microwave for just like 10, 15 seconds to loosen up. But yeah, the wall's there just so that the filling doesn't pour out of the cake. Top with your second layer of sponge and repeat that process again. Thin layer just to cover the top of the cake, wall of buttercream around the edge, and then your filling. Once you've applied the top layer of the cake, as you can see here from bad filming, but a great angle, <laughs> that you wanna hold your piping bag at a 90 degree angle to the cake and apply a layer around the very top and the very bottom edge of the cake. Then just do a random swirl of buttercream around the body of the cake too. I do the top and bottom edges just because as you go around with the palette knife now, the bottom or the top of your cake basically can kick up some crumbs on the, like the sharper edges. So this is just to properly seal in the crumbs on those two edges, which could create more crumbs. Here we're just creating a crumb coat, which is to seal in all the crumbs from the cake so that none of the crumbs from the cake enter our final display layer of our buttercream. I go around the bottom edge specifically just to make sure that that cake is fully sealed to the cake board. Also so that you haven't accidentally been leaning and that there is actually a proper layer of buttercream right from the very top to the very bottom of the cake. Once you've completed your crumb coat, you'll want to put the cake in the fridge or the freezer for around 10 to 15 minutes until it's completely firm to touch. I completely forgot what I was doing here and didn't actually start filming, but this is as far as I got. So with this cake, I'm creating an ombre effect. So starting with the darker color, I'm starting at the bottom of the cake, applying buttercream with a palette knife, just a layer around a third of the height of the cake. You can use a piping bag for this if you want to. If you're able to use the same piping bag now with the same color later, that's best so that you're not using double the amount of plastic piping bags. Moving on to the second color of the buttercream here, it's actually quite easy if you start with the darkest colour and then add a little bit of the white buttercream into each layer so therefore you don't waste any by having like loads of dark and not enough of the middle shade. Again another layer around a third of the height of the cake. Then I'm going to take my cake smoother, I like to use a metal one, and smooth those first two colours of buttercream together. I'll smooth the two colours of the ombre together first before adding the white, just in case the white blends into the colours before I've had time to touch it up. So now I'll just go around and fill in any gaps. As you can see, particularly around the bottom. Now onto the white. I haven't smoothed in the corrections that I just made on the previous layer. As some of the roughness on that middle colour, I would actually want to kind of blend into the white as I scrape round, so I'll just leave that for now. Using an angle palette knife, try and create as smooth a top as possible. I like to hold it flat against the cake and actually let the cake turntable do most of the work. Bring the white from the top down so that the colours don't mix before you want them to.
and then back in again with my cake scraper, holding it at a 90 degree angle, running the bottom of the metal blade along the surface of the cake board so that I know it's completely flat and completely straight. Again, make any touch ups before needing to smooth over again. I like to get really close to the cake here, as you can see, and literally look across it at eye level to make sure that I'm flattening the top edge of that cake. Fold a piece of tissue paper around your finger so that you've got the most control and just wipe off any excess icing that's on your cake board. Now you've completed the ombre effect, you wanna put the cake back in the fridge or the freezer for around 10 to 15 minutes until it's completely firm to the touch. While your cake is chilling, you can prepare three piping bags with the same three colors of buttercream that you've made the ombre effect with, with various tips. I've got a Wilton 2D and Wilton 8B and a random small star tip. And then for this particular design, like a buttercream swirl effect, I will actually start with the biggest shape. So I'm starting here with the Wilton 2D tip with the darkest colour. When I'm piping onto the side of the cake, it's important as it was when I was applying the crumb coat, that you hold your piping bag at a 90 degree angle to the side of the cake. So you're literally drawing flat onto the cake. For this particular cake, I've decided to kind of go with like a cascade of buttercream shapes falling down the side. And basically, I kind of alternate. So anywhere that I've put the darker blue kind of rosette, I now want to go around and put some of the secondary colour. Same again with the white, I'll go in and fill in the gaps. But just so that as we keep filling in and keep filling in, we know from the base that no two colours were next to each other. I like to add a silver sprinkle in the middle of my rosettes. And here is a Sweet Pelita Winter Wonderland Sprinkle Mix. As you can see, we've matched the colours perfectly. If I don't pipe around the bottom edge of the cake, sometimes I do just think it looks a little bit weird to be kind of rising out of the cake board. So an edge of sprinkles around the bottom edge of the cake and some on the top. I'll finish this cake with a spritz of edible glitter. And that's her, there she is, Winter Wonderland in all her glory. She does look a little Frozen-esque, a little kind of snowflake, like I said, nothing like a winter experience here, but super pretty nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and look forward to some more Christmas themed content coming your way very soon.